Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is, if I have it right, the 10th, 9th of October 2013, and this is our series um, uh, connected to Connected Educator um, this month. Um, and one of the thoughts we had in planning this is to do an open show, and then we still have some folks. Uh, and so Joe Paricio, Paricio and I have some unfinished business about sharing um, curriculum. So I thought we'd use that as an example. Um, and so our, uh, the key question here is uh, Karen Fassenpower, who's here with us, asked, uh, does open matter? Um, and how does open matter? And so we'll, Karen, if you don't mind, we'll kind of throw it to you to give some theoretical frame for us. <laughs> Whatever. Some... <laughs> Some babbling frame, whatever you want to say, and then and then um, we'll kind of use the example of trying to get our kids together on youth voices and share curriculum and so forth. Um, with us is also um, Joanne Bocher. Do I have that right? Bocher. Okay. From from uh, I got to tell you, one of my students who was so thrilled to get responses from your students oh. came to me and said, "What's this place? What W I?" Because <laughs> she saw the kids were from WI. Anyway, so um, it was cool to get their response. Um, and Greg, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name's um, Greg McVary. I'm um, in teacher ed and at Southern Connecticut State University. Um, was a middle school teacher for a long time, and um, just really interested in connecting students to. Um, in open writing spaces and getting them, like hearing that lesson of, oh, my students are so cool, like thought it was so cool to have one of your students write back to me. Um, so been playing a lot with um, doing multimodal poetry um, with students in open spaces. Very cool. And th those students are now college students you're talking about? Or? No, these are, well, actually um, working with pre college students and um, pre-service teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, have, I run a gear up program, so we had a summer academy. So I'm, you know, always surrounded by middle schoolers. I try to be, um, but I teach in elementary ed program. So I've, I've been doing a lot of work, you know, across the board, K to K to 16, P20, we'll call it. Very cool. And Sherry Edwards just popped in. Hi, Sherry. Welcome. Uh, you, your mic. We don't hear you yet if you're talking. So work on that a bit, and Christina, do you want to say hello? <laughs> hello, everyone. I'm Christina from the National Writing Project. And, um, I guess I'm interested in this topic because um, right now I'm a student. I'm also a student of uh, curriculum studies, so mm. part of that work I've been sort of just watching the way that um, teachers come together and share curriculum and share their work and practices. And especially on TTT, this is a favorite forum to watch you guys do that. <laughs> Sherry, are you there yet? Okay. No, not yet. We don't hear you yet. No. So, there. there you go. How there about that? Go. All right. All right. Yep. Thanks. Sherry Edwards from North Central Washington. I'm a middle school language arts teacher. Cool. So, Karen, do you want to set us up a little bit, and then we'll, you know, we'll interrupt and take it wherever we want to, of course. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, and I just want to um, give a shout out to Darren Cambridge, who's in our chat room, who's the oh, hi, Darren. The force behind Connected Educator Month that we are mm -hmm. also engaged in right now. So. So I'd did you let him, him know that we're open to him joining us? I absolutely <laughs> so, did. He, so said, he said he couldn't stay long, so I don't know if he's going to join the Hangout, but we're okay. happy he dropped by. Great. Um, so framing for this conversation. Well, you I'm know what? what? Karen, do, let, let me make it easier for you. Why don't you tell, <laughs> tell a personal story? Like, how did you personally get involved oh, okay. or interested in open education Good. or open so, resources? I mean, yeah. one thing I think is that just the term open can mean so many different things and so that's an interesting framing to think about and I, I would say from my own personal perspective I got involved in in the open sort of particularly open education as a movement um, from my work in curriculum 
it, but I got involved from a very narrow perspective, really looking at open licensing and Creative Commons licensing, and looking for ways to to share curriculum, even just within a building. And and this was maybe seven or eight years ago. We were doing some mobile technology implementations, and also some work with kids doing podcasts. And we found that there were so many restrictions on how you could use content for, for sort of traditionally copyrighted content. Even um, textbook publishers saying we had bought the textbooks, but we couldn't put them on mobile devices. And so that's sort of what got me into open as a licensing strategy, just to be able to share more broadly. But I would say since then, m my frame of reference for open is a lot bigger, and I think I think open licensing is great, but I think that's like a little tiny part of what being open is about. And it's, you know, for me now it's more about like how you share and it, it, it gets into what your identity is, um, how you view education. I mean, there's just so many ways to look at open. So maybe that will get some thoughts started with people. Anyone, anybody want to jump on that? What's open mean to you? Was that question too open? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Greg. Well, I've had this question. How we do now, it? Go ahead. Yeah. Because I've, you know, I have worked with districts developing curriculum before, and these are state institutions. Um, and. Greg, you're one of the people. Oh, hi, Karen. I just noticed that. Matt, that noticed. Um, <laughs> it's. I work developing curriculum for a lot of districts, and then I'll get another district asked to, oh, can we just get that copy? Can we use it? And it is amazing at how hard districts try to hold on to their own curriculum. Like, no, no, this is like this is ours. We we paid. We we built, made this. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, no, you guys are taxpayer-funded institutions. That's everyone's. Um, technically, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, you know, bite the hand that feeds me, so I don't say, well, no, actually, they could file an FOI and get that, and, you know, you put it up on your web, so why wouldn't you just stick a Creative Commons license on that and let people, you know, use your work and, you know, just give you attributions, but if I could push district-level leaders to even just, you know, put a Creative Commons license on their own um, curriculums that they developed, I would be so happy. But it's amazing, like, the resistance isn't just at the publisher level. It goes all the way down to the curriculum that districts develop. And so I'm, I'm, that's kind of what, I'm, what I want to push back with, with districts, is trying to, get th to convince them to take their own resources and make them open. In our school district... Go, go, go ahead, Sheriff. Go ahead, Sheriff. Yeah. Oh, in our school district, the the new policy that was going out was that the school district owned whatever the student or whatever the teacher created. So they want us, you know, to be um, creating curriculum to meet the Common Core. And, and um, so I had to talk with the school board about, you know, the fact that teachers work not, not just during the school day and they work on their own time. That should be that should be their own work. And so they agreed that the teachers would own their own work, even if they use it at the district, but that they would leave it with district for the district to continue using. So we got that written into our policy. That's huge. I mean, I think that's a really big issue at a lot of um, K-12 districts is who owns teacher-created stuff. And there, there have been some districts for the most part, it's not written into work agreements. Um, Utah is the only state that I know that's addressed it on a statewide level, um, and they're a big, they have a lot of um, open policy people influencing that. Um, but there have been some districts who've actually claimed that they own not only all the teacher work, but all the student work, which I think is just insane, really. Um, but I, I think it's an issue that unions or somebody ought to get on defining who owns this stuff. Because, I mean, there is, there's gray area legally if you consider it, you know, a normal employment agreement would say things that you produce in the scope of your job are owned by the employer. I think most teachers, is it's a very different situation where they're doing it on their own time. 
you know, they're doing it not not as a requirement of work, but people ought to get in front of this and define. And to me, open licenses are one way to deal with this because I think, I hope, and I'd be interested to hear Greg speak to this, but I hope that everybody's goal is to sort of make education as broadly available as possible and to share things and to, to collaborate. I think some of the ownership and copyright issues come out of people being afraid of what's going to happen. Who's going to be liable? Or there was one case that I got involved in where a teacher had sold something to another district and then the district she was with, the, the, she didn't follow through on whatever was supposed to be done and the district she sold it to came back to the district she was with and said, you need to fix this. And they actually the district in that case was saying, we don't own this, we don't have anything to do with it. But I think you know, if people talk through these issues ahead of time and putting a sharing license means everybody gets to use it and then it doesn't matter so much who owns it, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, except for maybe, there, you know, there's a few districts who've sort of done deals with Pearson or something and imagine that their curriculum is going to make them a ton of money, which that's a whole different situation. But That's so ludicrous, though, Could I, <laughs> that they're going to make a lot of money on it, right? So I, but can I just, um, trying to think of it from the district's point of view, it sounded to me, Sherry, that you're, the district might have wanted to say this is ours so that they could share it with other people in the district. Am I being naive by that? But you know what I'm saying? No. So, that, yeah. so that in fact they're trying to say what you create needs to be shareable for other people, right? So it's not a bad thing that they wanted. They had good motives it sounds like to me. I'm guessing. I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. they wanted to have the a copy that they could share it and the students do own their own copyright I mean the, the student work belongs to the student it's an artist but you know in the conversation we had if so much of what I do is not during school time, and you know I'd, I want to be willing be able to share that with other people and so and they agreed that that was that was a thing to do Right. So Peggy points out in the chat in the other room that, you know, some of the determining factors often is what, what if you're doing it on school time, which I think as a teacher, what is school time? I mean, that's really hard to define. And then also materials and equipment. So, you know, whether you're doing it at home or whether you're doing it on, I, I've heard discussions about if it was on a school laptop. Again, I mean, I think... I think if the goal is to share, you can put a license in place that everybody gets to use it. And I've never, I've never gone into a district and proposed that and had them really understand what we were talking about and had them say no. But I don't know. It's there's a lot of issues. Anybody else want to jump in on this? Who hasn't talked yet? <laughs> So, Monica, could you introduce yourself? And, and I, I want to go back a step. And, and since the word curriculum has come up, and I think it's kind of important to talk about this, what is curriculum, right? I mean, I, so, and Monica, do you want to introduce yourself and try to think about that with us? Sure. Um, okay. I'm Monica, and I'm in Colorado. I've been experimenting with a lot of different things. Um, coming down to what if the, the city or the community was the curriculum um, and so the city is the school and then you get into the whole what is public of public education and if you really look at what public is I don't, I don't see any ownership anywhere you know it just is mind-boggling I'm, I'm going back to the ownership thing Paul um, that I mean, the lines are so blurred. How can I possibly say that I'm, I created this thing? I mean, there's no way that I'm just me ever. <laughs> you know, so where do you draw those lines? And so we end up spending our days drawing the lines and then defending the lines that we drew and then making up more lines. So, so that's my take on the whole what is public and if it's truly public concerning all the people, then it's open should be. We shouldn't even be talking about even Creative Commons. <laughs> mm. 
So there's my intro. Do you want me to say something about a kind of address curriculum too? So there you go. <laughs> Sure. I, but, you know, as you say that, though, it does make, seem to me that if things are public and if we are standing on the shoulders of, of giants, right, mm -hmm. and I think that's all true, um, we should also give credit to where it comes from, right? So one of the really essential things that we do in um, on Youth Voices, we, we've started calling 10 self, 10 world questions, right? And I almost never mention that, and I don't mention that that came from an idea by James A. Bean. Um, and, and that feels like, that feels important so people can, uh, uh, for a couple reasons, just to know that, like, it's not something that pop in, popped into my head. <laughs> so you kind of make clear your process, but also to give credit where, you know, if somebody wants to find out where that really came from and how he used it, they can go do that. So giving credit it feels like an important thing to do. Does that sound true? I think, yeah. I think leaving a trail is really important just for the whole exploration thing. But there's really no way to attribute everyone, you know. Mm. Um, and and so I think when we when you get into that, when someone's really gotten to their art and they found the thing they can't not do and they'll do anything to give it away. They don't want people flapping about it and labeling their name with it. They want people doing things with it, you know. So I heard this author, so I don't remember this author's name, um, but her, her quote was that she'd rather people quit, I'm paraphrasing, flapping about her quote and that they would just use it, you know. Um, that perpetuating that art is what the true artist wants more than that their name is tagged onto it. But I totally, I totally agree, you know, as much as you can tag stuff, you know, so that people can go deeper or, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So there, I, I did the last 10 minutes. Who wants to take over here? Can I read <laughs> some things from the yes, chat room? Please. Yeah. Um, so Chad is with us in the chat room, and he Chad who? says, Chad Sansing, our friend. I know, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is there another Chad? <laughs> is there another Chad? <laughs> I hope he's um, laughing right now. <laughs> he probably is. Um, Tell him to come on He'll here. be laughing in two yeah, seconds. Yeah, where is he? Good. Uh, you know, Chad's very shy. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah. Chad's wondering about making school a more open platform. And he says, how do you get a school board behind open resources when systems are not particularly open organisms? And I think that gets to this question about curriculum. And it, some of you were involved in a discussion we had last year about sort of what does opening up the curriculum mean? And a lot of people push back on, like, there should be no curriculum. I'm sure some of you can speak to that whole thing. And I think it depends kind of how you define curriculum. Um, so but I think that idea... So. Well, I mean, curriculum, it, curriculum means different things. It can mean the sort of broad goals and path of learning. I, I think curriculum can be student-defined, so I wouldn't say there should be no curriculum. I think there is a curriculum. It's just who defines it and how restrictive is it and is anything compulsory, Monica? <laughs> So, Joe, jo, do you want to jump in, Joe, or Joanne? Oh, Joanne. <laughs> Tell us, yeah, hi, Joanne. I know, and Joe is right next to you, so, <laughs> yeah. Well, well we, I really haven't heard a lot about open curriculum, um, so it's just, I'm just learning a little bit tonight. But in our district, we have uh, professional learning communities, and that's when like all of the eighth grade and seventh grade content areas will get together and the kids come later so it's during our work hours and the kids arrive at school later and that's our time to build curriculum together and we'll often that's um, everybody in your school everybody in the whole district okay do you do you think that they are communities or are they just really long committee meetings I mean in that sense that I've I've always, I think a lot of administrators throw around this, like the PLC and the communities often, and I wonder how many of them actually are truly these, like, kind of self-organizing, and they, they, they do happen often, and a lot, 
But I see, I'm, I just worry sometimes that, you know, we just, oh, we're just going to make a PLC, and that means that we're just going to give our teachers a ton of more work to do. Um, but at least I love that you guys are building a ton of, getting time to just work on curriculum um, it's, together, it's which I think is important. It's definitely taken us time. I think this is our third year that this has been in place. And our first year, we had a lot of administrators dictating what our meetings, um, the agenda for our meetings and what they needed and wanted. But I would say the last year and a half, we've since Common Core has come out, we really have been building what we need oh, nice. and um, been able to direct that. So it's really growing, and, and it's nice, because we've never really worked together so well before. Then, you, then that's the community. That's the definition right there. You know, you know, you've lost a lot of the top down, and you guys are doing it all, building it all yourselves, and so that's that's great. And I think too, um, I think all the kids have all in our building are all having the same experiences, which before it would depend on what classroom you were in, and I, I just see a big benefit for the kids. What's it like in in Oakland, Joe? Whoop. In Oakland, I don't know. It feels. Can you hear me? For you, what's it like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We can hear you. Go ahead. Um. Okay. Cool. Um. I feel like there's like there. I want to echo what Joanne was saying about there's a rallying around the the Common Core and mm -hmm. and and what that's meant for kind of organizing how what we're doing in our PDs. There's a lot more. I, in terms of open curriculum and like who owns what, I I have to admit, like I don't even think about, I don't even think, I don't know, no one, I feel like no one. Okay. Right. Lisa, you're There's back, a lot right? of teachers. Say again? You, we lost the uh, phrase there. You were saying you don't think about open and then we lost you. I, oh, <laughs> I, I was, um, I was saying that we're all kind of so desperate for things to work for our students because you know it just that's how it feels that we're sharing, and teachers are teaching teachers. We're we're sharing best practices. The teachers are leading the PDs at the district level. So there's a real there is a sense of community like we're all rallying around something, um, and it's and it's nice. So it's kind of like good timing right now to do. Uh, spread the word of I don't you know like digital building there you know people starting to implement technology it's like people are ready for it um, so that's that's kind of the we are there is a lot more connection in our district can, between schools can can you can we ask you to uh, to keep talking a little bit about what you're doing on Friday and we can brainstorm around that a little bit as as an example too. You have a um, workshop on Friday, right? Or an hour? Yeah. Somewhere. So, well, yeah. I was gonna use that time to introduce the teachers. Uh, so, Oakland is engaging um, in a partnership with Mills College, and it's um, it's about civic engagement and trying to incorporate that and, and looking at seeing what that looks like in all the classrooms, and that's in aligned with you know also incorporating digital lit skills. So, it's. A lot of teachers in Oakland joined this initiative, and and now, now there's, we've done it for you know a year now, and so now what comes next is how do we spread what we're doing with our you know what basically what we're all talking about is the work that we're doing in our classrooms with uh, technology, how are we incorporating civic engagement into our curriculum, uh, what are what are the practices that the kids are doing now um, to uh, engage with the community, and um, we. On site at my school, we went from having you know three teachers on it to now we have seven teachers on staff. So it feels like a movement is building. So on Friday, we're going to be talking about what each of the seven essential questions are that we have uh, for the year. We're going to show the teachers what we're doing with technology. But it's an opportunity for a bunch of us to share that kind of work. And then I'll be sharing like what we're doing here today. Um, and uh, and showing off the work in youth voices because a lot of teachers are really excited about that. They want to they want to see it. Um, so they'll be reading your students' blogs on youth voices. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's where we're at. <coughs> so. <laughs> 
so how can we? I want to. I want to try to, like, I don't know. One of one another way to approach this question really is more like, how can we share more than we are doing, right? And I think open is certainly one way to do that, but it's hard to share and it's hard to, to. Like if you if if you have a topic you want to teach in class, you, uh, some somebody in the workshops we did this summer said, I can go online and find lots of stuff, but you know I don't know what works, what doesn't work. I don't. I need more teacher voice, more surround around that stuff. So I kind of want to uh, approach that question um, in some real ways here tonight, if we could. So, I, so um, go ahead. No, go ahead, Greg. Um, I think that's where we have to get those kind of self-curated resources out on existing networks. I mean, it, you, you see all of these things, like the Ed Connector that popped up, or the, like every time, or even um, I go back to, we're all familiar, you know, when NCTE had the name in, what was that, 2008, 2007, it was wildly open, everybody was using it, um, and then they throw the social network behind a paywall, um, you know, as a member-only benefit, and it's not, you know, as open. Um, and then you see that's when, you know, Jim Burke's um, English companion name takes off while um, NCTE shrivels up behind a paywall. Um, and But now you have all these people just trying to throw out different social networks, different places, and I think we have to just kind of, I don't want to say give up because, every, you know, I'll say that, and then tomorrow the next biggest social network, will, will somebody will make it tomorrow. But in the idea that, Stop trying to get everybody to come to your place, but just try to spread out resources everywhere. And I think um, what um, NWP is doing with Digital Is, um, what um, NCT has been doing a lot with kind of on on Twitter and getting everybody back to um, whatever they're calling their network now, um, is working. And you're you're starting to get some curated resources um, or just all the. I don't have a Pinterest account. I've never done it yet, but it's amazing what teachers like the the good lessons. And I try that's a lesson I try to teach my pre-service teachers is that good teachers are super creative, um, but the best teachers just steal from the good teachers, um, and because it frees up your time. And it, and I really try to tr teach them to poach other great lessons, and we spend a long time just trying to look for them. Um, and I at the district level, I think what what they need to do is encourage teachers to kind of build, start with building an online space, whether that um, whether that is in the number of, um, whether that's on a school website or a blog or something, but every teacher just should just start with having some extension of their classroom online because then you can't share if you're not posting. Mm -hmm. I know that was a ramble all over the place, but that's kind of my, my general thoughts. Chris, Christina, can you jump in and for somebody who might not know about Digital Wiz, tell us, just give us the brief of Digital Wiz. But then, like, how how many years has it been going on and what have you learned about teacher sharing there? Yeah, it's uh, interesting. Good question. Um, so I, I think we launched in 2000, end of 2009, 10, um, I think. And I believe, I feel like Digital Wiz is really influenced by the writing project practice, um, a long time writing project practice of teachers uh, sharing their work with each other um, and kind of getting feedback on their work and then going public with it. So in writing projects often people were doing that within their community of their writing project and then maybe taking increasing leadership um, in their school district or at their writing project site or whatever. Um, so Digitalist was sort of meant to support those kind of practices. And um, and so it's built with a place for people to, um, you know, sort of build out inquiries that they're working on, um, potentially get some feedback with before going public um, among other people who are building out inquiries in there, and then going public with their work. Um, and then there's also the ability to curate a few of those um, pieces of work together and then make commentary across a set of work. Um, and it also has a blogging feature. So 
um, so we sort of have a range of ways for people to share work and thoughts and ideas and to potentially um, respond to each other. And then because of social media, the content can get shared and recurated in lots of different ways. So, um, so that's been pretty exciting, I think. Um, we've gotten pushback from, um, well, it is exciting, actually, just when you go in there, the, the depth of content and the range of content. Um, Sounds like, by the way, so, as you describe it, it sounds mm -hmm. like the same way I would describe a research project with kids, too. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> but, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But go what, ahead. The pushback? Yeah. Uh, the pushback that I was saying, Greg? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, it was interesting because um, one place where we got um, some pushback um, from Karen and some other folks was around the fact that where we... Um, so going back to the open theme, where the way that we um, have licensing on digital is, and um, we added a, it, the terms of use include a Creative Commons license with um, it's the sort of most restrictive Creative Commons license with a non-derivative license because um, there is student work in there, and we felt that we really had to have a non-derivative derivative license. Um, since student work was sometimes embedded and contained within teacher work. Um, but we're building in the new, um, we're going to Drupal 7, and in this new um, uh, upgrade of Drupal, you, there are apparently modules now that let us sort of separately tag student work from teacher work. So that's just one thing that's coming up, but I think it's pretty interesting in terms of open. I'm really excited to see what people do with that, because student work can remain non-derivative or however it needs to be for that student's work, and um, but the teacher's work can be fully open and um, shareable and remixable if need be. So I'm kind of interested to see how people play with that. I do. Okay. Lots of good points there. I want to jump on, though, that as a definition or a, a guideline for what curriculum matters and how it, how I get involved in it, um, when I see student work, I, I, like, I'm drawn to it. And when I don't, I'm like, it doesn't feel so real mm -hmm. <laughs> in some way. So, you know, seeing the student work right next to a curriculum is a is a really wonderful thing to see. Um, I think that's kind of important. Any other thoughts that others have about what Christine just said, or anything else coming up here? Anything going on in the chat room that we should hear? <laughs> so. um, I, I think it, yeah. go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Greg. It's it important. It just it's hard, like working with them. We all know the challenge, like um, getting that to be allowed in an open environment is so hard. It's like you can share the student work, but it's got to be in a closed environment. Or you can't, that's even if you're allowed to share the student work. Um, so, I, Paul, I give you so much credit for what you've done with the student voices and, and yeah. the, those youth that voices, are... Youth voices, yeah, yeah. Yeah, youth voices, and those that are able to, on digitalist, put their student work products. Because if you don't see those student work, we need mentor text. And yeah. using students, having the ability to look at other students me as mentor text, it's, it's just so powerful. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that um, that that mentor text idea, I'd love to, you know, sort of make that more clear and sort of be able to talk about that um, in terms of our practices um, and around the student work. And right now we ask people to include student work that is um, whatever permissions their district or whatever restrictions their district, that's what they use in digital is. So it really does range quite a bit. So that's all online sharing, and uh, those are really wonderful comments. I just had the experience uh, just yesterday of sitting down with the teacher and trying to show her some of the curriculum that we've been developing or, uh, for Youth Voices. And it, it's so powerful to, to be able to click on a kid's name and say, yeah. look, at, look at what he did, right? Yeah. And, and she's like, I have that student too. That's kind of amazing what he did, right? So that kind of, um, you know, access and availability of the student work is really important in sharing with other teachers, yeah. it seems to me. But, yeah. 
any other thoughts? Or <laughs> Joanne, let me invite you back in. <laughs> yeah. um, I was um, thinking when Greg was mentioning about sharing and how we have to start um, within our school, we have a learning management system. I don't know if the rest of you have a learning management system, and that's allowed us when we worked in our PLC um, to put what we create out there, and then we each have our own. Um, it's Schoology is what we use, and so we have a place where we can all put and share everything we create for um, our ELA classes. And then we can go take it and build our own. So that has really made it easy. Um, and we have that throughout the whole district. So that is a huge step to help us all share. Can you give more of an example of how you've done that, either using somebody else's work or share, seeing your work being used through Schoology? Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, Schoology. Um, it's, it was implemented district-wide. So all mm -hmm. of the district in this classes have it. And we just started it this year, but it's like a little bit like Edmodo, where mm -hmm. you can put things on, but it's just, it, but it's more of got a campus feel because kids will log into my class, and everything they need is put on there, and they can. There's blogs, and um, everything is linked. You can put, you can manage video, and. It, but it just but are teachers be... sharing this work too, or how does that work? Yes. So, like when we meet in our PLCs, everything we create, or if one person does, or like if we're working on a blended, blended learning unit, um, we'll put it together so we can all go get it, you know, and then put it in your class Schoology account. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but it does. Um, it is all in one place, and then we can all go get it. So that's great for your district. One of the questions is, what if I wanted to see it? Right. <laughs> that would be the next very right. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you know, <laughs> we're, we're all having that question. I mean, I my, my school, and for lots and lots of reasons um, I'm for it, set up a Moodle site. Um, wow. So all of our curriculum sort of goes to that. And Moodle is like wonderful, but keeping it open is I keep I keep the, the developer who by the way is in Philadelphia, um, who we her working with who I'm working with thinks I'm, you know, doing the wrong thing constantly by keeping as much of it a, a, as open as possible. But anyway, so there's all of that. I mean, I, Moodle is like I don't think it's unusual. So Schoology Moodle. All of I these sort of the sites are, are great for the people who are in the sites, but they end up being silos that it's hard for other people to see. Right. So, yeah. I've been, um, now granted I'm probably breaking like 14 federal laws, but um, mm -hmm. I've been using Google Apps as a free LMS for the first time. I've been experimenting it with it this time around, and there's a great community on uh, Google Plus um, mm -hmm. about using Google Apps as an LMS. Um, and so my students, we have a Google site, that runs the class. We have a Google community, Google groups on the site. Each student has their own um, Google blog, uh, has a blogger account, and the blogger comments are connected back to Google Plus, um, and it has worked out phenomenally well. And it is private because I have to, you know, by by law, keep it that way. Um, uh, so, what, I, I, what, what I did laws is, is that? Is that oh, God, what laws that? level on FERPA? Uh huh. Oh, okay. Uh, at higher ed, you have to. Yes, they, the students have a uh, have a right to keep all of their information. Like, if a parent even called, I can't really discuss the student. Right. Um. So I I don't know if there's some way to get it to get it public. I know for me personally, in keeping my job, um, it's important to keep it public because it's our CIO is big on student privacy. Um, and just being able to. They they didn't even want the fact because Google is trolling all that information for, you know for their for their algorithms they didn't even want that they'd rather you know um, but and for I, the NSA but go ahead. yeah you know <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd rather but I've been finding as I've been finding Google Apps for education to be and we're not even a GAF school but I've been finding it as such a wonderful tool for uh, to to work as an LMS and I mean and Google has made their own LMS Core Smart. I haven't tried it. I heard it takes a little Python programming ability, um, but it's getting better. But 
I've absolutely loved using just open resources to kind of make an LMS. Because I've used Moodle, I've used Blackboard, I've tried them all, and, and I'm absolutely loving this approach. So Google Apps, is it an open resource? <laughs> that's, that's a question. Is it an open resource? I, to me it is because anybody can join and it's free and I can share it. But it is owned by a corporation. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it, it's like Moodle. It's an open resource, but it costs you a ton on the back end, too. Um, so, that, you know, there's nothing really free about Moodle. But free doesn't mean open. Um, open can cost. Open does cost. Um, the other, the, and there was some pushback. Some people wanted me to use, you know, to build an LMS just out of WordPress. And I've tried, and I, I think it's, I think I could do it with Drupal, um, with, with a lot of their modules, but I don't think the plugins for WordPress are really truly there. Even using BuddyPress, even using a PHP bulletin board. And it just gets complicated. It just Google makes it simple for me, and I'm okay. So I'm okay that it may not be open. They can steal. They make my life easy. So I I, I let them steal my info. Well, Greg, yeah. uh, when you said open at first, I was um, understanding you to mean that you could have a sort of closed LMS, but people could push stuff out too. And right? they do. They're, they 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 push their blogs out that, that by their choice. Um, the community's private by default, but if they have posts that they want to share publicly, they have the option to. Right. Um, which is which is a nice little feature. Some of the kids don't understand it well, so they might want to keep it private and they don't, or they might want to make it public and they don't. Um, but it is it's an acceptable level of open for my university. It's not as open as I'd like. Mm -hmm. um, I I make a public copy of it, so any change that I make to the LMS, I put on the public one. And then, like, the only thing that you don't get to see are their group discussion boards um, and anything that they post privately in the community. Other than that, we, we keep it all open. So, Joe, you you put your curriculum and for assignments for students, and I think Chris Sloan does the same thing. And Chris was going to join us tonight, but he had parent-teacher night. Um, but um, so you, I think you put your your assignments to students on a personal blog, is that right? I put it, yeah, I use Google Sites for it. Okay. And, and that's your... Yeah, that's our classroom site. That's their go-to mm -hmm. place. Um, and I don't really think much about the fact that everybody in the world could see it. I think it's really, really public, yeah. So, yeah, I probably am breaking the law, too. I'm going to plead ignorance, duh. I don't know. I, you know what? I don't know. I, you, you're not under any FERPA restrictions in, in K-12, so relax. Well, as long as you're not lying <laughs> cool. about your kids being 13 to get them to create their IDs. Uh, no. I don't put that. Who does that? Yeah, I would yeah, never know. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no idea what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, and half are you guys a gap school? I have no idea. Oh, okay. No. Then you, yeah. See? We are. Yeah. But, yeah. okay. So then you're, and we're, you're and we're all over Google Plus too. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that's I just put it out there just to, for the sake of all the kids knowing everything that's going on and all the teachers at my school knowing what's going on. There, are, people are looking for examples. So there, that's my. I'm just putting mm -hmm. out what I'm doing right now. Do you see teachers using it, Joe? Like, are you? Uh, yeah. One. The minute I put it out there. Um, then I had a bunch of emails back talking about how do they do that, mm -hmm. which felt really good, um, and that's part of what I'm sharing on Friday. But it was like it wasn't a big deal. It was more I, I was ready to just put my stuff out to the world, um, whoever w wanted to look at it, um, but for really for the students. And so that's what I think the teachers like. It's just that it's a simple model. They wanted an example, and that's where we're starting is... Um, yeah, that's where we're going to start. I have no idea what's going to happen with it all. This is my first year having a, like a site up for the kids. Mm -hmm. Although we've been blogging for a long time, but it's this is the first time having like a central place. So uh, let me ask you, let me get, uh, so it's out to the world and that's great, but often, and, and I complained about this last week and I'll continue mm -hmm. complaining until we figure it out. <laughs> but th so like your kids writing about their senior projects and um, you know, the, the really wonderful projects that they're, they're thinking about and questions. Um, and I wanted to see your prompts for that 
and I yeah, didn't think, we, we oh, I could just that. go to her blog, right? I know, and just yeah, you know, I, sorry to be yeah, so I didn't think, yeah, I didn't. Um, but so, so here's what here's one thing you could do at the bottom of your school page on Youth Voices, you could mm -hmm. put a link to your blog and say, go find stuff here. Um, so okay. I just just right want now? to say that, but yeah, I, but I just want to get a nitty gritty for a second, but then pull back out and, and think about why um, the nitty gritty. Um, so that there are whatever there are thirty teachers using Youth Voices. Um, they see something on Youth Voices that's kind of wonderful that, that they want to do too. How do they kind of easily hook up with that? Um, and so one of the solutions that isn't working <laughs> not terribly well, but is you could put your assignment on a mission. So if you go into a, a, um, mm -hmm. your admin panel, and uh, Joanna, Joanne, I'm saying this for you too, and yeah. Sherry, and you could create a mission and then um, and it's not so easy, and this is a development thing that Thanks. we should look at. But you could the creating the mission isn't so hard. I, I, it's it's just a but. But then um, there are fields for attaching the student work. So the mission is there, and then the student work is there. And then what's nice is that when you when you do that, it, it also attaches your assignment to the student work. So it's a lot of uh, messing around. For you, I gotta admit, which is why probably it's not working. But when, <laughs> in terms of people using it more, um, but then when I give assignments, it's it's wonderful to just make a link to that mission. It's hard to find those missions, but you can make a link to it, and then they can see last year's students too, right? Uh, one quick example, um, Shantan, and this is a funny example, but Shantan Nusaha um, did a lot of scratch projects, and so he collects all of those scratch projects next to his assignment for it, and so next year students can find them really easily. Um, unfortunately, when they went to Flash, all of that um, got messed up, but <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll talk about that another time. But uh, so. I wanted to give that kind of practical talk and then ask, I don't know what to ask, but ask like how can we be, how can we share more um, on Youth Voices so it's not parallel play, that's one of the things we said. But I, but I think, again, and I'll shut up after this, um, I think it's, I think it is a microcosm of, of bigger issues, like there's a lot of repetition and if we could share more of our work and make it accessible, and we would know where it is, it would be wonderful. So I don't think it's a problem of things not being out there, although that's a little bit of the problem, but I think it's also how do we find all this stuff. So I'm going to shut up. Anybody want to respond to any of that? <laughs> Sherry, you haven't said much yet, could you, or recently. You want to jump in? <laughs> yeah, I would like to think of a a mission, so maybe kids might <laughs> what do you mean? introduce to connect yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think we need to collaborate more on that. You know, but I have it. I have to send my email to you so I can get my kids started <laughs> on youth voices. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll email you. <laughs> okay. Send it. We're here to help. And, <laughs> I know. Great. Yeah. Good. And Joanne, what's it been like for you getting started on Youth Voices and finding curriculum? Um, well, I haven't. I haven't really found. Well, I just think Youth Voices is great. Um, mm. And I, we just built our bios, the avatars, and we did our ten self and world questions, and we started commenting. So mm -hmm. I'm really helping the kids on. Um, I'm using the guides. I know they're a formula, but I really think they need them before they kind of let them go. But we did the general discussion guide, and tomorrow we're going to talk about the argumentative channel and how to agree and disagree commenting. So just kind of taking them a little step by step, and then I want to go into... These are eighth graders, right? Yeah. It, yeah. Cool. yeah. And then I want to go into where they comment, but then back it up with some citation. So... And then we'll go into posting. So I'll, I'll take a look at the mission because I do think that's a great idea to, um, I've seen a lot of articles on like the heroes, I'm not quite sure where, it, um, that would yeah, be. Those are, those are coming from a school in Panama. And yeah. she actually did put up a mission about the heroes, so 
I'll peek I, at I, that tab. A quick, a quick um, hint, um, <laughs> until we get better at indexing this stuff, uh, if you just go to the missions page and search on that page for like heroes, you'll find mm -hmm. that mission. Okay. If you search the page, but yeah. Okay. Um, but it sounds like it's, if I can say, it sounds like you, there is a curriculum, right? And <laughs> I mean, nobody's, I don't know if it's prescribed or not. I don't think it is, but you know, it's uh, so uh, like I recognize everything you just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. I was thinking the same thing. Like, oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it was a perfect scaffold, is what it was. It was like we're going to start. You know, we're going to register. We're going to build this. We're going to move from just reading. Then we're going to move to posting. Then we're going to move to you know posting with a citation, and then yeah. we're going to put up our own original materials. So it's. Right. I don't want to let them just go because then it'll be too much. I think what they do at home, you know, more of a social, wanted them to get the feel of the academic purpose. So, um, and, and I've been very proud of their posts, um, or, or their commenting, I'm sorry, their commenting. And they've done such a good job on controversial topics. So I really, um, I've, I've really appreciated those guides. And talk about, you have um, some retired teachers or friends or I, something also yeah. keeping track. How's that working? Yeah. I do. Um, I, I do technical problems. They're struggling logging in. I think they tried to comment without logging in. Um, my vision for that was um, I had two really close friends that were my mentors when I started teaching, and they're um, recently retired. And I asked Paul if they could... Be are they admins on Youth Voices? Uh, they might be. I think they probably are. Yeah, or and, they could just be editors. Yeah. And they want to spend. Um, they want to spend part of their days looking at my students and helping comment. Um, you know, and just encouraging them because they're both writing teachers. So, um, and just the idea of looking over with the special ed kids and uh, maybe some of the gifted kids too to kind of take them all to the next step. But I'm just struggling getting. I don't think they've had successful logins yet. Okay, but it's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, so I think a lot of retired teachers they still want to be involved, and it's an easy way to mm -hmm. still be communicating with kids and you know having more people comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joanna, thank you. I think it's your kids that are coming. Is there a my mission? <laughs> we'll get to Sherry in a second. Go ahead, Joe. Finish oh, your I was. Oh, I was just saying that I think it's, I think, Joanne, it's your, your kids that are commenting to mine. Okay. My yeah. student, yeah, my, um. And, and some of the ones very, in Utah, too. For, yeah, some of the kiddos yeah. in Utah. Oh, it's been great. It's, it's, it's really just the fact, they had instant audience. That was, yeah. the, the, it just spread like wildfire. The kids that hadn't posted started posting. And it was wow. just, it was so cool. Yeah. Was, and I was, see some of the cool. kids that I have commented are now getting comments. So yeah. people are flying to come. <laughs> and I told my kids today, I said, Dialogue, it's great. Yeah, I said, I know that you're randomly looking for topics, but I really want you to connect with the kids. You know, what kids are you relating to, how they write? And um, so we had a little discussion about that today. So I'm hoping they'll start networking and telling students that they like what they're writing or they want to argue with their writing and so forth. Mm. Awesome. And as a pre-service teacher who has to teach writing, I, um, I'm just about to start. You know, how do you, how does writers workshop? Unfortunately, I only get like I want it to be an entire semester or two semesters. I get like five weeks out of one of my classes, but I can totally see integrating this because now I have, I struggle like how do I teach writing without them actually looking at student writing? Um, and this is this is such a powerful resource. Yeah, well, that's what we did with the Mills pre-service teachers last. Oh my God, it was just like last March. They they just it was only six weeks out of their whole, you know, their whole year. But they spent time with my seniors, and they were the audience for my seniors, and that was very rich. I mean, they, we had just that much time, and those the pre-service teachers got a lot out of it. So, um, yeah, they're a great audience. We're gonna I want to use them again this year. So. Sherry, we thought, said we were going to get back to you. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I was wondering, is there a creative writing component to it? Because my eighth graders um, participate in Rhyme All in November. So I was wondering if we could incorporate some of that work in their voices. 
Of course. <laughs> but okay. Yeah. Um, so how would we? So, but you know, I'm going to throw this back to you. <laughs> how would? Yeah, how, I like, do. Like so, how? Like they they could what? Just like in we've learned in research, you know, publishing publishing along the way is the way to go. Not not waiting till the end. But but. You, so I don't know, is there a place they publish um, in that project? No, they just they, at the end they if they want to we pub we publish their book. Mm -hmm. So you know a copy from Create Space or Lulu or something like that. If they if I, they like like their story, but so, I was thinking you know maybe they could write a character sketch or or something to see how people you know respond to who their characters are that'd be cool yeah so yeah, yeah. putting it out there to get some response would be a great idea yeah yeah, yeah going. um does anybody know I, I, was, I have to check I, I I'll, there there's a site that the kids are using um, for their fiction a lot of kids are using um, and and I have I have kids First ten minutes of my class, they get to do whatever they want, <laughs> and I learn a lot um, during that time. Um, so, and one of the things they're doing is they're reading they're reading books um, that other students have published, and I have to find that site. But um, anyway, so it's they think they're doing you know they're cheating, but <laughs> then they say I'm reading more than I've ever read before. And, yeah, you are. Anyway, so. So there are other places to publish that they that they do, and it'd be nice to kind of link to that stuff too. And but so, yeah. So Sherry, we can work on that. <laughs> that happens in okay. November, right? So we need to get it together. Yes. That'd be great. Yes. So we're we're I'm, I'm realizing we're kind of close to time. Uh, Karen, do you want to give some final thoughts, and then if, if there, and, it, and and we'll just you don't have to, but we won't go around. But if you'd like to jump in, please do. Because <laughs> sure. you've been well, watching the chat room there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've enjoyed this conversation a lot, and there's also a lot of good conversation going on in the chat. And one of the topics that we were talking about is just why is it hard to share, and the sort of whole fear and control issues, and and what's happening not just in schools right now but in broader society with all of this and I'm I gotta say I'm shocked that this conversation didn't go more into what's going on with NSA and all that stuff right now because I think that's pretty uh, that's pretty pertinent um, and other than that I, I think some of the conversation about like sharing student work just really made me think students should be making these decisions and everybody should be making these decisions for themselves whether right. they want to be open and share students should be deciding for themselves teachers should be deciding for themselves you know administrators and then sort of you know all of us as citizens so when you post you should check off what you want it to mm -hmm. be yeah, right? yeah. yeah but I mean not even just the technical thing of a license but just do you want to share? Do you want to be out there? And I think by making that decision for other people, first of all, we're not developing the critical skills to think about these issues, um, but also we're taking away just a really fundamental right of people. And again, not just kids, but like all the way up through the power structures of adult society. It's pretty big issues. So on that note, <laughs> It's a good way to end. Yeah. <laughs> and and we do and we do and we do have problems on both sides of that, right? I mean, kids oversharing and kids undersharing, I think. And yeah. Right. But so, if we don't talk about it, how's anybody gonna make a good decision, right? Right. Anybody else want to jump in? <laughs> no. Okay. So let's uh, finish up for tonight. Thank you all. Um, next week we are going to continue with some connected educators talk. And um, I forget when this was May, June. We did some a couple shows around um, teacher voice. So we're going to invite invite some of those folks back again. Um, and I guess it's really kind of a similar theme, isn't it? Except it's about teachers sharing uh, their stuff. Um, and whether we share it around curriculum or for advocacy is one of the 
one of the points that we'll be talking about next week um, on Teachers Seeking Teachers, which is here every Wednesday. Thank you um, all for coming by tonight. Um, I want to say as we leave that we broadcast here over the Ed Tech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network, and Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier set that up several years ago. Thank you all, and we'll see you and your students' work <laughs> soon. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.